So now let's talk about the X text and Y text in Matplotlib. So if I run a code, you can see that in our chart, we have different X texts. You can see that these texts, these small lines are called X texts because they are on the X axis. And these small lines, which are on the Y axis, are called Y texts. And as you can see, for example, the X texts are from zero all the way up to four. And for example, suppose that we want to change the positions of these X ticks. For example, we want to change the positions from 0 all the way up to 4 with a step up of 0 0.5. We want to change those positions, for example, to 0, 2, and 4. So let's do it. So in order to do so, I can simply type plt.x ticks and I can pass, for example, a list of numbers. So for example, 0, 2, and 4. And now if I run a code, you can see the positions of our X ticks has changed and they are 0, 2, and 4. And also, as you can see, the Y ticks are from 1 all the way up to 3. And you can see the step is 0 0.25. So suppose that we want to change these positions uh, from these values to, for example, 1, 2, and 3. So let's do it. So in order to do so, I can simply type plt.yTix, and I can pass a list of numbers, for example, 1, 2, 3. So if I run a code, you can see here is the output. And as you can see, we have changed the X ticks and also the Y ticks. But now let's suppose that we want to change the corresponding labels as well. So for example, instead of, for example, 0, 2, and 4, suppose that we want to put other labels, for example, A, B, C. So let's do it. So in order to do so, after defining the positions of our X ticks, we should define the labels. And those are labels, for example, in this example, we want to choose, for example, A, B, and C. And if I run a code, you can see the labels has changed. And for example, if I want to change these labels as well, for example, let's assign other things as well. So here, I want to choose other things, for example, D, E, F. And now if I run a code, you can see the labels of the Y ticks have been also changed. And also remember that instead of passing a list of values to X ticks and Y ticks, you can pass other things as well. So for example, suppose that I want to pass a range of numbers. So I simply type np.a range, I mean the a range function in the NumPy package. So I want a range of numbers uh, from, zero, from minus 0 0.5 all the way up to, for example, 5 with a step of 5. So that's it. And also let's change the Y ticks as well. So I simply type np.a range, I mean a range of numbers. For example, between 0 0.5 all the way up to, for example, 4 with a step of 0 0.5. So if I run a code, you can see here's the output. And as you can see, these are the values for the X ticks. And also these values are for the Y ticks. And maybe you ask why these values are from minus 0 0.5 all the way up to 4.5 and not 5. Because as you know, in the arrange function in the NumPy package, this second value is exclusive. And also, on the y-axis, you can see the values are from 0 0.5 all the way up to 3.5, not 4, because this second value in the a-range function is exclusive, not inclusive. So now, in order to practice what we have learned in this part, let's take this example. Suppose that we want to change these x ticks to something like this. So as you can see, for example, if the value itself is a float number, for example, 1.5 is float, then we are writing that as it is. But if the number itself is not float and it is integer, for example, like 2, we want to convert that into integer and we want to write that in this manner. So let's talk about this and how to convert those X ticks to something like this. So in order to do so, the first method is using the hand typing method, which is not very good. So we want to use another method and we want to use a list comprehension in order to pass those labels. So in order to do so, we simply type for every value, so for every value in this range of numbers. So for every value in this range of numbers, what we want to do is we want to return the integer of that value. We want to return the integer of that value if the floor of that value, if the floor of that value is equal to 
the value itself. And what do I mean by this? When I say if the floor of that value is equal to the value itself, it means that the value is integer. So if a number is integer, then the float of that number is exactly the same as the value itself. So if the floor of that number is equal to the number itself, it means that it is the integer. The number is integer. So in that case, we are returning the integer of that values. I mean, you want to drop those zero decimal places. That's it. And otherwise, and here we should simply type otherwise, I mean, else we want to return the value itself. So now if I run a code, you can see we have changed these values into something like this, which you can see if the number is integer. It, it has no decimal places, but if the number is float, it has decimal places. Now I really suggest you to watch this video, which is on the screen now.